welcome back to Liz Sews and the next episode in my Bra 101 series on constructing the Maya bra. In the last episode, we put our cups into our bra band. Now we can start working on the elastics. Let's get started. So where we left it last week, we had our bra looking like this. We had just finished putting our cups into the frame and now it's really starting to look like a bra. So first I'm going to start with my bottom band elastic. This is a little bit different than most of my tutorials that I have up on my channel already. And this is a technique that I've been using lately and I actually quite like it. I find it's a little bit easier to work with on my machine. So I'm going to do my bottom band first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my bra from the right side and I'm going to lay it down so I have my cups on the left and the bottom on the right with the right side of the fabrics facing up. And then I'm going to start looking at my elastics. So sometimes the elastics are um, soft on both sides and in that case it doesn't really matter what, which way you do it. But this is Bra Maker Supply Elastic and I do have one side that's a little bit more rough and tumble and one side that's a little bit more soft and fuzzy. And the soft and fuzzy is what I want against my skin. So I'm going to take my elastic so that I have the soft and fuzzy side facing up and the straight side on my right side of my body. And I want to align the straight side of my elastic with this bottom band of my bra the fuzzy side pacing, facing up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this on with a zigzag stitch. And I want my zigzags to come as close as possible to the scalloped or pico edge of this elastic. I'm not going to be stretching my elastic at all while I apply it. That's my personal preference. The, of course, the front of the bra is already firm and stable and non-stretch. The only thing that's stretchy of the bra is the back band. So I really don't want to make my bra any smaller than it already is. So I like to apply my elastic one for one. Uh, some people always ask if there's a certain length I need to cut it. Personally, I don't cut my elastic at all. I start with just this big long piece and let it tail and then I'll just cut off what other excess I don't use. So I'm going to go over to my machine, sew this on with the zigzag stitch as close as I can to the pico edge while not stretching the elastic at all. Now you may find that it might be helpful. The only place where I might stretch the elastic just a little bit is around curves like this. It might make it a little bit easier to turn that elastic to the inside if you just give it a teensy tiny little stretch around that curve. But other than that, don't stretch your elastic. <laughs> And so this is what it looks like once it is sewn on to the bra. And now what we're going to do is turn our bra around to the inside. And I want to fold the bottom edge towards the inside. And what you should have is those little pico edges just sticking out, barely visible from the outside of the bra. So now what we're going to do is what I call a serpentine stitch. It's also sometimes referred to as a three-step zigzag. If you don't have that on a machine, you can certainly still use this regular zigzag stitch and it's what I've done for probably about 50-60% of my bras. Um, but lately I've been using this serpentine or three step zigzag just because I think it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that stitch and I'm going to go as close as I can now to the straight edge of the elastic. Making sure that I just have this, you know, folded over really nice and taut. That way you're still getting that nice pretty edge from the outside.
And once you've done that, it should look something like this. You can see that the serpentine stitch or three-step zigzag that we just did will be visible from the outside of the bra. And this is what it looks like from the inside. A uh, good rule of thumb is just to remember that whatever is in your bobbin is what's going to show on the outside of the bra and what's ever in the top threader is what's going to show on the inside of your bra. So especially if you're using contrasting elastics, you want to make sure that your top thread matches your elastic and your bobbin thread matches your bra fabric or fashion fabric for the most clean results. So that's all we need to do on the bottom band. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in my underwire channeling. And the reason that I've been doing the bottom band first is I find it makes it just a little bit easier to get clean stitches here if I'm not worrying about the bulk of the underwire channeling um, getting messed up with my feed dogs. So that's one of the reasons why I've sort of changed that methodology. So for the underwire channeling, we have here just this fluffy little tube. Um, and I call it a tube because there is in fact a hole that runs down the middle of it. Some people might not necessarily realize that when they're first using it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my bra in half like this. And I want to be working in a seam allowance only. So I'm going to align my underwire channeling. Again, this one has a much more rough and tumble side and then a little bit of a softer side. So with the softer side facing up because that's what I want touching my body. And I'm going to align the edge of my underwire channeling with my line of stitching in here that was at a quarter of an inch. So not my basting stitches from earlier, the one where we attached the cup to the bra itself. So I'm going to line that on the side here and then I'm going to sew with a straight stitch as close as I can to that edge. Just to tack it in place. So ideally you are only sewing in the seam allowance only. You should not be able to see any of these stitches from the outside of the bra once you've done this. And I'm going to start at my bridge or my center front section and go all the way around to the outside and then I'm going to stop at about here where that cross cut seam is, which is about, mm, let's say maybe an inch from the end of the bra. So I'm going to leave that um, free floating. So one thing that might make it easier to sew closer to that edge is putting this in your machine and then moving your needle over by several ticks. So I like to move it over by three ticks. And that way I can be sure that I'm sewing along the edge of my underwire channeling. Okay, so here I have that underwire channeling sewn in. You see the back tacked at the bridge and I've left about an inch open over here. Uh, I'm going to cut this off about even with the top of the cup. That's a little bit longer than it needs to be, but I'd rather have a little extra than not enough. And then I'm going to repeat that for this cup. So we can see that None of that stitching that I've done of the underwire channel is visible on the outside, right? Because it's all being done on the seam allowance itself. So for this side, because the bra is now the other direction, this side is much easier to start from the underarm edge. Uh, and so I just align again my channeling with the top of the cup but I'm going to start sewing probably down here where that cross cup seam starts so that I do have that little bit of tail that's left open and sew all the way around until I get to the bridge. So now I've gotten the underwire sewn in on the second side uh, and just going to clip all of that excess off. Okay, so this is extra underwire channeling. Uh, for my particular size, which I use between a 38 and a 40 underwire, most kits will have excess channeling for me. And I save these excess 
pieces and I could go ahead and use them if I'm ever making a tester bra. So this little extra bit won't be enough for a full bra, but if I save up enough of these, obviously I can use different colors in a tester bra, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So I always save these little bits and bobs for use um, down the road. So the last step that I'm going to do now on the underwire channeling is just to close off my underwires at the bridge or center front. So I am going to, again, push everything out of the way. So I'm working with only the channeling itself. I'm going to use a straight stitch back and forth up here maybe four or five times just to make sure that is closed off and secure. And I'm going to do that for both of my underwires channelings. And once you finish it off, it should look like that. So you can see that if we had gone ahead and used uh, some sheer cup lining to do um, a no stitch upper edge, that would have just been completely a straight line and you wouldn't see any stitching there. So now I'm going to move on to my underarm elastics. So the first thing I want to do though is these little tails that we've left, I'm going to get those out of the way. So you can use a pin just to pin it out of the way. I kind of like using these wonder clips just to make sure that it, it doesn't interfere with what I'm doing up here. So I'm going to get my strap elastic out and I'm going to cut it into two pieces. For me, I find that what works best for me is to have a piece that's about 18 inches long. Um, but you might need more than that or less than that. If you, uh, so I would sort of like base it on bras that you used to wear. Do you always feel like the straps are too long or do you always feel like the straps are too short and sort of go from there. Um, so this particular kit, let's see how much did it come with? Didn't tell me how much it came with. But. So this kit, if I were to cut two straps that are 18 inches a piece, this is going to be what my leftover is. So actually for this kit, I am just going to fold this in half and do it like that. There's really not much you can do with little bits and pieces of strapping unless you um, want to use it in later bras down the road for like decorative pieces on the outside. Maybe you want to cover up a seam with some strapping or something like that but I don't typically use strapping leftovers. So I'm gonna cut my two pieces of strap here at roughly 18 inches. This one is a little bit longer. And then I'm also going to get out my rings and sliders that go with the straps. So these should be the same width as the straps that we are using. So I'm going to take my slider piece here and I'm going to look at my strap there and on mine there is a decorative side so like sort of a satiny side and also a softer more plush side. So I want to look at the strap, I want the satin side facing up and I'm going to go up through my slider over that bar in the center and then come back down. Right, so I should still have it looks like a little belt loop and it should still have the, the shiny side facing up. And I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to go over to my machine with a straight stitch and sew back and forth to secure that into place. And then once you secure it, it should look like this. So then I'm going to go around to the other end of the strap and thread my ring onto it. and take that free end. And again, I want to make sure that the satin side is facing up and go up through one side of the slider and back down the other, making sure that my satin side is what's visible from the top. And now we have an adjustable strap. So the ring is what's going to attach to the front of my bra and then I can change the length of this using my slider back and forth. So just like any other commercial bra that you have. The next thing that I need to do before I can attach my underarm elastic is check, double check the width of the, the ends here. Um, 
we looked at this when we were initially cutting out the pattern itself but I always like to double check now because again, it's much harder to fix later on. So the, the width that we should have here should be equal to this plus the width of the elastic itself that we're gonna use on the underarm. So I like to align, align my hook and eye at the edge and then I'll lay my elastic here and you can see that mine is just a little bit too wide. And whether that's because I cut out poorly or I mismeasured, I don't really know, but it's something that we can fix right now, but it's really hard to fix later. So I'm just going to mark here how wide it should be. So I just need to cut off a little bit here. And I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna have to cut off the same amount on the other side as well. But let's just double check to be sure. Yep, same amount on both sides. So again, I'm just gonna mark that in there. And what I want to do is make sure that the edge of this piece is that length and just sort of blend it back up into my back band piece. So I've just trimmed that off with a rotary cutter just so it looked a little bit nicer and cleaner. And again, I just want to double check to make sure that it looks like it's the right width and it does. Okay. So the next thing we need to decide is where we want our straps to attach down here. So what I like is about one inch uh, from this side. I find that works pretty well with me. But if you have incredibly narrow shoulders or problems with sloping shoulders where your straps are following down, you can certainly place the straps anywhere along this edge. Um, but the closer you get towards the hook and eye, then obviously the closer it is towards the center of your back. So I'm just gonna get my little seam gauge here and I'm going to measure one inch in and that's where I wanna put my strap. And I wanna lay my strap with uh, the fuzzy side facing out and the top of the edge. So not the edge that has the ring, but the free edge um, resting against the edge of my upper band. So that's where I want my strap to be. And I'm just gonna pin this into place. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other side as well. So I'll measure my one inch in. So now we're gonna get our underarm elastic and so that is the pico that looks just like the bottom band but it is just a little bit narrower so in my case this looks like it might be three eighths of an inch and just like we did for the bottom band you want to see if you have a fluffy side and a rough side if you do then you want to make sure the fluffy side is what's going to touch your body and you're going to do that by making the fluffy side face up when the bra is face up and we're gonna align the straight edge of the elastic with the straight edge of here. And just like we did for the bottom band, I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch as close as I can to the pico, and I wanna go up and over, like pass on top of that strap elastic. When I get to the cup portion over here, I wanna make sure that all of my seam allowances of my cup are facing outwards or towards the back of the bra. And that's why I have clipped my underwire channeling out of the way. It just helps because we don't want to sew through that right now. So we should just be sewing through the bra materials itself um, with the seam allowances of a cup towards the back of the bra. We're going to come all the way from the back up to the sides up and around here. Um, when you get to the section here where we've trimmed away the foam lining, we want to make sure that the elastic is sewing to just the fabric itself and not the foam and go all the way to the top of the cup here. And then I'm going to leave myself about an inch and a half of excess elastic when I finish. Okay. 
Okay, so it should look something like this. Of course, I have all of my excess elastic up here. So I'm going to leave myself maybe about an, an inch and a half of excess space. So we have caught the strap in there. And that way, when we fold the upper arm elastic to the inside, you can see how the strap attaches there. And it has a really nice, clean finish. Uh, if we take a look over here on the underarm edge, remember we trimmed the foam there and the reason that we did it is because I wanted to reduce bulk because when we turn this elastic to the inside edge now, now we have a nice clean edge, but we still have that foam tucked all the way nice into the inside of the bra. So now we're going to do our second pass on here and unlike the bottom where we did the zigzag or three-step zigzag stitch for a second, I'm still going to use my regular zigzag stitch for this. And like I said, we're going to fold this to the inside of the bra. We want to make sure that we're catching the foam and we're going to do that zigzag stitch all the way across, down, 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 down. We want to make sure that our strap is out of the way. Um, and zigzag to the very end, as close as you can to the straight edge of that elastic. And once we've done the second pass, it should look something like this. So from the outside of the bra, you can see how this strap is on there really nice. You see I've I've skipped one of my little stitches because it got a little bit thicker there. But again, if you're using thread that matches the bra, that tends to not be noticeable. Um, and we can see here with the foam, we've made sure to capture the foam in the inside so it, it's resting nice and smooth. And this is what it's going to look like from the outside of the bra. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the other side with all of the same steps. So first pass from the right side of the bra, flip it to the inside and do the second pass of sewing. And here we have the second underarm elastic finished. And again, I just really think that this method for finishing off the strap looks really nice and clean to have it sandwiched in between those two. So that's where I'm going to leave it off today. Come back next week and we will get this bra finished. See you guys next time. Take care.